Good morning and welcome. Today is Wednesday of the seventh week of Easter. Our Mass is for Ed and Margaret Young. Our virtue this week is creativity. Creativity allows us to improvise and act in innovative ways. A successful life requires that we approach it in a creative way, open to new directions, challenges, opportunities, and solutions. Creativity is making something beautiful out of everyday experiences. Please join us in our entrance hymn number 696, Come Now Almighty King, number 696. morning. And as we come together to celebrate our Eucharist, let us recognize that this is a manifestation of God's great love for each of us. And so we come together as a people of faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace and love of the Lord Jesus be with each one of you. Today is a good day. Today is a day when we once again can enjoy the Lord's life and His presence and His love. And we have the beautiful weather to help us to celebrate, even though you have to attend school yet. But it is a sign of God's presence. All creation is a sign of God's presence and love. And as we come together to share in this profound mystery of our faith, let us once again recognize that we too need to experience God's loving mercy. As we recognize our sorrow for our sinfulness and for our disobedience of God, we pray, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Graciously grant to your church, O merciful God, that gathered by the Holy Spirit, she may be devoted to you with all her heart and united in purity of intent. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, 
forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At Miletus, Paul spoke to the presbyters of the Church of Ephesus. Keep watch over yourselves and over the whole flock which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers, and which you tend to the Church of God that he acquired with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come among you, and they will not spare the flock, and from your own group, men will come forward, preventing the truth to draw the disciples away after them. So be vigilant and remember that for three years, night and day, the unceasing and molest each of you with tears. And now I commend you to God, the gracious word that can build you up and inherit among all who are consecrated. I have never wanted anyone silver or gold. You have these very hands, served my needs and companion. The word of the Lord. Our responsible psalm is, Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. So forth, O God, your power, the power, O God, with which you took our part. For the temple in Jerusalem, let the kings bring you gifts. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. You kingdoms of the earth, sing to God, chant praise to the Lord who rides on the heights of the ancient heavens. Behold his voice resounds to the voice of power, confess the power of God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Over Israel is his majesty, his power is in the sky. Awesome in his sanctuary is God, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them, and none of them was lost except the son of destruction, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you I speak this in the world so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word and the world hated them because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. 
Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I send them into the world. And I consecrate myself for them so that they may be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, one thing that at times can confuse us is what does exactly the Scriptures say? Those readings that we heard, the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, which was written a long time ago, and then the Gospel from St. John, which was written a long time ago, we may at times wonder, what are they actually trying to tell us about the person of Jesus, because that's what they were all written about, was the person of Jesus and how he was recognized and accepted in, in, in his own time, but what he had to say not only for a long time ago, but for each one of us. And I think that there's an important thing that we have to keep in mind and you who are yet younger, younger than some of us here, the important thing to always keep in mind, however young or old you may, may become, is the one simple fact that God loves you. God loves you. And God loves you. And we need to say that to ourselves. We look in the mirror when you comb your hair or do whatever you do in the morning. You don't shave yet, I don't think. Do you? No, okay. Neither do I, apparently. Uh, when you look in that mirror and you see that face that is there, whose face is that? Whose face do you see in the mirror? Your face, your own face. It's you. But if you say to that person that you see in the mirror, it's just not a face, it's the person, you say very quietly, God loves me. Three words. God loves me. And that is a profound truth that we have to keep telling ourselves because at times we can forget that. We can think that we're just sort of a nobody, not important. But we are important because that's why Jesus came into this world. Yes, it was a long time ago, but he came for each and every one of us and for all those who will come after us. Now, we all grow up. We all get old, get crickety. And there will be people that come after us, people who will be sitting in the same pews that you are sitting in now, maybe next year, 10 years from now, whatever. And you will have grown gone to school somewhere, and eventually may have your own families, eventually may even become a religious or a priest. But in through it all, the one thing that we need to keep in our mind and in our heart is that truth, God loves me. And to say that, say that over and over again because it makes God real and it makes God present. You know, we say to other people, and other people say to us, you know, I love you. And you say that to your parents, hopefully. I love you. 
And that sense that somebody loves us is very important. It's very powerful. But to think that God loves me, the God at times who I think we can sort of forget about, keeps God real. And that's the one thing that we need to continue to remind ourselves of, regardless of how old or how young we might be, because that's the one God who we hope to spend the rest of our life with. So say that, practice that, not just when you look in a mirror, but in good times and in then maybe they're not so good when you're walking outside in nature, when you're involved in doing things at home, when you feel tired or upset or disappointed or happy, God loves me. And to know that that's true, because God does love you. That's why he hung up on the cross for us, each of us, out of love. So remember that. And though you may not have any homework to do in the coming months or whatever, I'll give you some homework to do. To say that phrase, God loves me. In the morning, in the middle of the afternoon, and in the evening. It's not penance, and if you don't say it, nothing's going to happen to you drastically but it helps us to recognize the presence of God, which is our life's journey, to know that he walks with us, okay? Can you do that little bit of homework? Nobody's gonna check up on you, so you don't have to worry about it. And the person that it's going to benefit us, oneself and other people, because we realize that they're saying, praying the same prayer, God, loves me, okay? And you won't have to wear a mask when you say that to yourself. Let us now stand and recognizing God's presence with us, we want to bring forth these, our prayers of petition. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Catholic Church, for Francis our Pope, Bishop Zubik, Father Matt, Father Lou, Father Ward, and Father Jim, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, and for the church, the embodiment of Christ on earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may always be responsive to the needs of the poor, the hungry and vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. For all mothers that through the intercessions of the mother of God, the Lord will bless them and reward them for their sacrifices and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our kindergarten class who have a kindergarten celebration next week, and our eighth graders who have concluded their education at St. Wendelin School, that they may look to a new challenges with wisdom, insight, and trust. We pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, suffering, homeless, or struggling with any hardship, that they would find healing and comfort we pray to the Lord. For our community that we proclaim the love of Christ in word and deed, and for Ed and Margaret Young for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. 
for our special intentions that we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Father, hear the prayers we raise up in confidence. Help us to trust in your presence with us and of your love for each of us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join us in our offertory hymn number 595. Thanks be to God, number 595. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate as our dutiful service, graciously complete the, sa the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us shares in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord, and confess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Clare and St. Francis and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Thank you. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in our communion hymn number 368, Bread of Life, number 368. Change your 
Let us pray. May our partaking of this divine sacrament, O Lord, constantly increase increase your grace within us, and by cleansing us with its power, make us always ready to receive so great a gift through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless and sustain you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. May you have an enjoyable remainder of your day. Please join us in our closing hymn, number 700. All praise and glad thanksgiving, number 700. Thank you.